know, I always say that I think 2008 was the year that changed everything for comic book films. Like, obviously, there was like Spider Man and the X Men movies, which were which were good, but Iron Man and the Dark Knight brought everything to like a whole new level. Um, and I think that you know, all the way through Avengers Endgame we had a trans transformative time of comic book movies. Now, there were still some stinkers in there, but for the most part, they were all either good, great, or solid. Um, but I remember very distinctly when I was growing up around this time, my parents had a subscription to Entertainment Weekly, and of course they would talk about the upcoming comic book films, but I think my favorite part was getting to read articles about past comic book films. And what uh, one that I remember very distinctly was an article about that was like the worst comic book movies not based off of a Marvel or DC property. And this list included films like The Phantom, The Shadow, The Rocketeer, uh, Sheena, um, Flash Gordon, The Lone Ranger, which is the movie I want to talk about today. But the thing is, the other films that I had mentioned, and there were others on that list, I'm sure. Um, I'm sure Barbed Wire was on that list. But the thing is, all those other movies, I actually like. Like, I think that The Phantom and The, and the Shadow and The Rocketeer are actually good, well-made movies. I think that maybe they came out around the time that, like, comic book movies had died out in the 90s because um, we got movies like Batman Forever and Batman and Robin and Steel starring Shaquille O'Neal. Um, so I think that people just more interested in, the, in these like maybe if the if these movies had come out um sometime between the avengers and avengers endgame they probably would have been way more successful um but the the thing is they've gained a cult following and rightfully so like i think legitimately the phantom movie with billy zane is one of my favorite comic book films i think it's actually quite good it's a movie that i come back to quite a bit um, and I like all the other ones I mentioned too. It's like Sheena I didn't see till recently, um, but I think um, despite Tanya Roberts not being the best actress, I think that the cinematography is absolutely beautiful. However, I never got around to watching the 1981 Lone Ranger until tonight. Like it's it's almost 2 a.m. and I'm talking about this movie because I didn't want to forget anything. Because uh, the thing is, I wanted to watch it way back you know, when I saw this list, because I was really curious about these movies, because I was like, I'd never heard of any of these the these movies. But the thing is with the 1981 Lone Ranger is that it was such a failure in the 80s that it did get a run on DVD, but the thing is it was out of print during that time, so DVD copies were, like, crazy expensive. And I wasn't going, you know, I, I was in high school, I wasn't going to spend, uh, uh, you know, 50 to $100 on a movie that I might not potentially like. Um, but, so, I'd forgotten about it until, like, a couple months ago. Like, I, I, I saw it for free on Tubi, and I couldn't believe my eyes. I was like, that's The Legend of the Ro Lone Ranger. That's the movie that is, like, notorious for many reasons. Different reasons than the Disney film, and we'll kind of get into that. Um, but the reason I'm like recording right now so late at night is because I, I, I was bored. Like I was honestly kind of ready for a movie that was like fun, bad or over the top or, um, something that was just so abysmal that I was puzzled by it or at least fascinated. But the thing is the movie is actually directed competently and the stunts are really good. Um, there's a opening chase sequence with a carriage where there's a stunt man that goes underneath all these horses and then he like falls off the carriage. Um, great stunt. Um, I think the gunfight during the last 10 to 15 minutes is really good. Um, and I think it's, it's mostly practical. Like most of the movie, they actually like stunt men eat shit. Uh, when they blow up buildings, for the most part, it's real buildings. There's a couple like model work in there too, but I, I even like, I even prefer mo most of the time I prefer water, uh, model work compared to like CG. 
um, cause it's like, I mean, it's, the model is real. Like somebody actually took the time to build it. Um, and you know, I'm not here to necessarily rag on CG, but I think that was the problem with like the Disney film is that it felt so like artificial and that's where I'm like stuck. Like I'm stuck between these two movies, like which one is worse, but I think they're bad in different ways. Um, and I, I can't, cause I, I haven't seen the Disney Lone Ranger in almost like eight years. I didn't even see it in theaters. I remember reading articles about it, of course, when it came out, because there was this infamous train sequence that Disney spent a buttload of money reshooting. Um, and of course, there was the controversy about hiring Johnny Depp to play a Native American. And he, or somebody claimed that he was like 5% Native American. So at least in you know the 81 original uh, and in the original TV ser series, they hired a Native American actor. Um, and I mean, obviously Johnny Depp is a great actor and the reason they brought him to play Tonto in the, the Disney movie is because, I mean, he was riding high off the Pirates movie and I mean, obviously he's a huge name. But honestly, I feel like he should have played the villain maybe. Um, if not the Lone Ranger himself, like, I think that would have made more sense than um, casting him as Tonto. But... Um, so, what about the cast in this movie? And I'm gonna do something I never do. I'm gonna like actually look at my phone because the filmmakers didn't put a lot of effort into this movie. So why should I have to try to memorize all these actors that I barely know? So Clinton Spilsbury and James Keach play the Lone Ranger. Why is why do I list two actors? It's not because I mean there is an actor that plays him when he's younger, but the thing is Clinton Spilsbury plays like the physical. Lone Ranger, I guess, but apparently the producers and the directors thought that his performance was so bad that they had to bring in another actor, James Keach, related to Stacy Keach, uh, to voice all of his lines. And I can't even imagine how bad Spilsbury's uh, performance was because Keach's performance is very wooden. It's It reminds me of the guy who did the voiceover for Sam J. Jones and Flash Gordon, who I didn't know was dubbed over uh, until a couple of years ago. Um, but the thing is, Sam J. Jones, at least, I mean, he's not the best leading man in the Flash score, but everything around him is so insane that you just don't care. That's like a fun, that, that's kind of what I wanted this movie to be, where it was just kind of wacky. But the thing is, like, most of the movie's very, like, bland and serious. Um, so it's like, Keach voices this character very, like, plainly. Even during, like, emotional scenes um but basically the, the plot is very quickly it's, it's established that the lone ranger as a child saved tonto when they were both kids and um his his parents end up getting killed and him and his brother end up going away or something like this it's very quick i i honestly this is why i wanted to record this now because it's already the film's already leaving um, and then he grows up to become a lawyer and um, this is when the stagecoach attack happens and he goes to this town to meet his brother who's now a ranger and so the the rangers who I guess are some sort of police force um, all get together to go hunt down um, these outlaws and these outlaws are led by um, the main bad guy played by Christopher Lloyd I like Christopher Lloyd, and I think his performance in this movie isn't bad. In fact, I think that it would be better if he went more over the top. But he's so reserved in this movie and so serious um, that it's not a bad performance by any means, but it's just the thing is the rest of the movie is so boring that he could have been like... He, the thing is, all the other movies I mentioned on those lists have interesting villains because they go so over the top. And Christopher Lloyd has gone over the top before. Like, I like his role in Star Trek Three because it sort of walks that line between an over the top villain and a great villain. And I like him a lot in that movie. And obviously, I he's incredible as Doc Brown, but he's probably the best actor in the movie. Um, his motivations for his character are kind of not really explained but that's not his fault that's on the writers and the director um he wants to become like the owner of texas or something so he kidnaps the president um and 
he kills the rangers and then that's when the lone ranger comes back to life because he's rescued by Tonto after his brother after the lone ranger's brother and all the other rangers are killed so Tonto saves the lone ranger and the lone ranger is like nursed back to health by the by Tonto and his tribe and, and Tonto's tribe are kind of barely in the movie they kind of voice their concerns like why are you helping out this white man and I mean I, I don't blame the American the Native Americans for being pissed but Tonto's like well this this guy yeah he saved he saved me as a child I owe him a blood debt um so there's like a whole like training montage and the thing is like none of it lands because um the the Lone Ranger is so like bland and boring like even when he like trains Silver to like tame the horse the famous horse and then the, the theme plays I mean the theme for the Lone Ranger is iconic and I felt nothing <laughs> like I um I mean I love the theme and it's an exciting theme but it's like if you if it's like it's like if I just sit here and say nothing and play the Lone Ranger theme, it would probably have about the same effect. Um, and I think that's what makes me so mad is like it feels like I wasted my time. Like I guess at least now I know like that mystery has been solved. Like okay, why is this movie like not been talked about hardly ever? Um, I think the production of this movie and it's 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 treatment of Clayton Moore who played the Lone Ranger in the 50s TV show which is a it's a good that's a good solid show I remember I remember watching that when I was younger and I mean it's it's a 1950s western kids show so if you go back and watch and you're like what the hell is this to keep that in mind I mean it is very up its time but Clayton Moore has a lot more charisma than this guy and I think Army Hammer, who played the Lone Ranger in the 2013 Disney film, is a, is a far better actor. Um, I, I at least remember that. And it's like, I pick and choose things that each film does better. I think my problem with the Disney film is that it, it was so, like, washed out of color. And then you have the 1981 version, which is a lot more colorful, and the voiceover. I almost forgot about the voiceover. There's this narrator throughout the film who... I don't even think he's a character in the movie. Like, I, I don't know who he is. I tried to, like, find out, and... It, I... He sings the the credits song, I guess, but the thing is, uh, it's not, like, the Lone Ranger's dad. It's not the Lone Ranger. Um, it's not Tonto. And it's not his brother that is killed. It's not the Lone Ranger's brother that is killed. Any of those four would have made sense as the narrator. But the thing is, the problem with the narration is the narration will explain things that you literally just saw like it explain so there's a scene where the lone ranger explains to tonto why he wants to wear the mask and keep his identity secret because it's like uh he wants to protect you know the people that he left behind you know there's this girl he likes and everything um it's i mean it's, it's the same like superhero cliche like i want to become a symbol or whatever and you know that's all fine and dandy and then this narrator comes in and explains the same goddamn thing that the characters literally just got done talking about. Like the audience is stupid. And I realized that there was narration in the original TV show, but, you know, that was a TV show for kids in the 50s. And I also realized that The Lone Ranger was a, was a radio serial before that. But the thing is, you have to have a, a narrator for, for radio serials because there's no image. You know, so the narrator makes sense. But the thing is, when you see this, the damn scene and you watch the actors perform it, and then a narrator explains it like they think the audience is stupid. Like, if you hated the narration and, or I guess the voiceover or whatever, and David Lynch's Dune, this is far worse. Um, at least, like, in Dune, the, the David Lynch Dune movie it was characters like thinking to themselves whereas this narrator is just it's just it's a character it's somebody that's not even in the movie like i don't know why they decided to do that uh, other than like they th they thought they were trying to emulate the original tv show 
Um, that's the only thing I can think of. Um, but yeah, it's it's the worst. It's almost funny at times because it comes in constantly throughout the movie. It's like, dude, I, I was I was just watching that scene. I know what's going on. You don't have to tell me. <laughs> it's it's it blew my mind. Um, that's the only part of the movie that like cracked me up was the narration because it's just like why is that there I don't get it um but I think another thing this movie is notorious for is is the producer's treatment of Clayton Moore who played the Lone Ranger in the 50s TV series because this guy loved that role so much that even like 30 to 40 years after the show had ended he would still like go to conventions children's hospitals, other events, and even interviews dressed as the Lone Ranger in character. And I really admire that sort of thing because it's, it's, I mean, to some actors it's just a job, but, you know, when this guy takes the time to, um, I guess, you know, reward his longtime fans, it's cool. Like, I think it's cool. And the thing is, I remember very distinctly reading about this in that Entertainment Weekly article that you know the producers were like well if we let him continue doing this while we're trying to make this new movie they're not going to think that we're making a Lone Ranger movie but the thing is they ended up having the exact opposite effect because people heard how shitty they were being about suing Clayton Moore like no you can't dress up as a Lone Ranger anymore because we own that character and of course he found ways around it it's if you have time read about it it's it's a weird situation like I don't know how the studio didn't think this would make them look good um in fact, they should have, they should have had him in the movie, as sort of a passing of the torch thing. Like he could have played the Lone Ranger's father, or older, really older brother. I don't know. Like that would have been the best way to do it. Like have Clayton Moore in the movie as maybe one of the other Rangers or something, or as his dad, and he gets killed during the gunfight uh, during the first during the first quarter of the movie. Um, that would have been the best way to do it to include him I mean the, they, they did literally the worst thing you could do like imagine if like James Gunn said to like Henry Cavill like you you can't talk about how you used to be Superman like you can't talk about it anymore uh, that, that, that would be the, one of the worst I mean the whole thing with the DCEU is a, is a whole nother thing and I'm, I'm ranting and I I usually don't do this and it's be, probably because it's so damn late and because I'm annoyed um because somehow I was let down by a movie that I knew would probably be bad, but it was bad in the worst way possible. And the, the funny thing is, I was almost, I almost considered saving this movie for a B-movie binge with Mel. And I'm glad I didn't do that. Like, I'm glad that Mel and I didn't have to sit through this together. Maybe it would have been more fun, I guess. But the thing is, it's not. the movie is competently made enough to be an okay western. I, I, I guess comment below let me know if you've seen it what's crazy to me is like I was like looking is like are there any retrospectives or anything on YouTube about this like there's a handful of uh, reviews from smaller youtubers like myself but there's 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 like there's nothing like there's no like Oliver Harper retrospective or anything for this movie and I think that's because it's like I mean you could talk about the production and everything um, but it's just, it's just kind of, you know, it's barely a footnote. But yeah, you can watch it for free on YouTube or Tubi. Uh, don't pay for it. You know, the it's twelve ninety nine for Blu-ray. Like I looked earlier. Uh, I think if I was ever to own it, I would probably pay at minimum a dollar for it at like a garage sale. Like honestly, um, and then I would. <laughs> never watch it unless it was for something else on my YouTube channel but yeah I don't have anything else it's too late for this shit um, goodbye